modeling when I was 16 years old. I actually was found by a local agency in Connecticut and I was doing it for about two years and then I got scouted to go to a nationwide casting and there I met an international agency and they were based in London as well as Chicago and I had the opportunity to go to Las Vegas with them and that was really cool. Um, that kind of changed my view on modeling though, because um, they were concerned with, really concerned with body image and you had to be a certain way and look a certain way. And I was doing it originally for fun, but once that hit me, it put my mindset in a different way and it you know, caused me to have an eating disorder, which I'm recovered from, but I'm a big advocate for eating disorder um, people that are going through them. And um, so then after I, went through that experience in Las Vegas. I went to college. I decided to finish off my degree in communication studies at Northeastern. And then I started into the workforce, met my husband, had children, started raising my kids. They didn't really have time for modeling. So, you know, doing it here and there for fun, like front of me, hey, you wanna do a bridal show? Okay. So nothing really solid, um, but modeling is a really big passion of mine. Now that my kids are older, I'm starting to really want to get back into it, but you know, like on the mom aspect and the commercials for Target or Old Navy or, you know, fun things like that. I don't want to do it, you know, if I have to feel I have to fit a certain body type or a certain mold. I want to be me, be able to express myself. And I also want to help younger kids, boys and young girls, because eating disorders affect both boys and young girls and show them, you know, you can be you and you can do modeling and it's not all about have to look one way and one size. And there's just so much variety out there now that I'm finding and that's where I got to and that's how I'm here today. <laughs> Kind of cliche question for a mom, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> my kids really do though. My kids are what get me out of bed, like literally in the morning, they get me out of bed, but they also are my motivation. You know, I get up every day, I wanna be the best I can for them and be a role model for them. You know, they know what I've been through and I want them to realize you know, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to be angry. You know, I just want to be the best person I can for them. And they really are what drives me each day. Okay, yeah, so the favorite thing I own is this pillow, okay? I got this pillow. It looks really nice now because it's a new pillowcase I got for Christmas, but this pillow is older than me. My grandmother gave it to my mother. My mother gave it to me, and now I am the proud owner of a fluffy ball of disaster inside this, <laughs> inside this pillowcase. Um, so that's the story behind it, but honestly, I take it everywhere I go. If I have to go on vacation or go away overnight for you know visiting my mom or somebody but the pillow goes with me everywhere and it's sentimental value to me and just it's comforting <laughs> mm. started in health and beauty because um as a nurse I definitely started to feel um, a lot of pressure with taking care of people this year uh, during COVID and the pandemic that, you know, um, they're more on the 
sick side. And I saw an opportunity with a mutual friend of mine who, you know, she was talking about how much she loves taking care of people and their hair and skin and how she kind of relates it to nursing. And it kind of the conversation sparked because I, I was kind of sharing how this year has taken a real toll on me. And I said, not that I ever want to leave nursing. I have always wanted to be a nurse, always dreamt of being in the medical field. It has been something that has been in me since I'm a little girl. I, I love science, I love people. And, you know, that's, it's such like a changing field and there's so much to learn and you grow. I mean, things, things change constantly. So it keeps my mind active. But, you know, I, I'm just a girly girl that loves makeup and hair. I never saw myself in, in that world. But when my friend had presented it to me as she kind of felt like she's taking care of her clients, I was like, okay, tell me more. So I also, you know, I, I, I was born blonde and my hair as I got older got darker and I clearly, you know, color my hair and it needed some love. And I tried the products and she said, why don't you join the team? And sorry, my dog is crying. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I started to look into the science behind clean beauty and how important it is to be using things that are sulfate free, silicone free, you know, paraben free, wax free, and what it does to your hair and how using these types of chemicals on your hair when we take heat to it and, you know, we style it and just environmental pollutants coming in contact with these like chemicals, it's damaging your hair. It's literally like when you put toast in a toaster, you're setting your hair on fire essentially. You're melting your hair follicles. So I just kind of saw it as like a fun way to balance out what I do for a living, for the people who need me, for health reasons, but in a way to make it fun for people who are healthy, you know? And, you know, health and wellness is a part of nursing. And, you know, unfortunately in the field and in, in the way that I work right now, it's really not, um, there's not an opportunity for me to provide so much preventative care but this kind of is like that. So it's like, hey, you want longevity for your hair and your skin? You need clean beauty. You need to start, you know, from now to provide that. So yeah, that's how. <laughs>
I chose this. And I mean, she was interviewing people like I really didn't know at that time. But then she would interview people that like, you know, at that time I would recognize certain pop stars or whatever. But also my parents, you know, obviously they're my two biggest influences like in life, but my parents come from a very humble background and, you know, they always tried to provide my brother and I with opportunities. And their biggest thing was always make sure you're learning. And I felt like Barbara Walters with like these interviews, like I just saw that. I'm like, she's always getting to the bottom of something. Like, and she does this because she wants, it, it was always like somebody controversial. She was always trying to get to the bottom of who this person was and why, you know, this happened and why they did what they did and really who are you? She always gave somebody the opportunity to share who they were. And I loved that. And I, I think I like thrive off of knowing things like, you know, people, people, I think feel like somebody who, who possesses a wealth of knowledge, I think unfortunately can sometimes come across as a know it all. I don't always necessarily share what I know. It's, it's for me. And like, you know, through this year, you know, I, I shut down a lot and what got me through it, especially with being sick and I was out of work. I was, I was not even working from home. You know, I'm working right now kind of on the COVID hotline for the hospital and answering the like calls. People have to be um, out of work and telling them what they have to do as far as quarantining. Um, you know, I read a lot and I've always read a lot. And I just feel like you can get anywhere in life. If you get dropped off in the middle of a desert somewhere, you can get anywhere if you know something. Because if you meet somebody and you can talk about something and you can connect with them, you can get anywhere. So I think it's so important to keep yourself aware and educated and have knowledge about things. So yeah, that's a huge thing for me. And I think that that plays like a big role. Like, I mean, you have to wear so many hats as a nurse and you have your patients for the day and I could discharge patient, get a new one, and you, you turn over patients so much. And then you're also dealing with physical therapists, you're dealing with doctors, you're dealing with the clerks that you work with, you're dealing with, you know, house staff, like you're dealing with so many different people, right? And especially with your patients, you have to know, like you have to be able to reason with them somehow. You have to be able to talk to them about something, right? You can't just talk to them about the weather. Like you have to find something to like reason with them on. So bring up a book, you bring up a movie. Like you, even if it's nothing, it's something that you don't like. Like you just have to know about things, I feel like. And I just feel like it gets you so far and it makes you burst it all. It makes your, it just makes you able to talk to the janitor or the president of the United States. So that's, yeah, that's what gets me going every day. <laughs> So the favorite thing I own is my dog. <laughs> um, I like it's funny. Um, I she's literally like playing with me right now. <laughs> um, she's so I I don't even. This is why she's the favorite thing I own. Um, Ellie, um, I grew up having dogs and I'm dying right now. You're the worst. Um, I grew up having dogs and I am a huge animal lover. And, you know, I, we, we had to put down my last family dog a couple years ago. Ellie's going to be two in the summer. Stop. Stop. And, and here. And she, um, you know, I was living, I live by myself in the city and, you know, I just, I, I truly, who I am, I, I, I identify by having an animal, by having something to take care of. That's, <laughs> that's me having something to take care of. So it makes me really happy. And, you know, having a sense of responsibility, like as if I don't have enough with the job I have, but just kind of having that companion and having something around and having something that you're responsible for and something that relies on you. And I think it gives me a purpose. 
And I think pet therapy is a really amazing thing. And, you know, I, I couldn't have planned this, but Ellie is a really great animal. And unfortunately, because of COVID, I wasn't able to go forth with it, but I wanted to enroll her in my hospital's um, pet therapy program. So I was going to bring her into the hospital. And I think on like every other Sunday, you can bring animals to the units. So I was going to do that because she's very intuitive with people. So she knows like kind of how to interact with them and like who likes to be, you know, jumped on or who wants to just pet her or like, you know, things like that. So she's very gentle with people, except for me, clearly that she's like beating up right now. So, um, yeah. And you know, I kind of, you know, I, I, I really, I had wanted to go to medical school and I, I, I realized I'm too well-rounded of a person. Um, and, and it takes away so much of your life. And I give so much credit to people that devote themselves to it. And I just realized there was so much in nursing that I could still accomplish in medicine without having to go to medical, well, in healthcare without having to go to medical school. And I can still go for my nurse practitioner, which I'm going to. And, and you know, I think philanthropy and charity is such a big thing to me. And, and I want to give back so much to animals. Like I love them. And I, you know, at some point, like if I could do something and I could get a, large sum of money somehow and give it to the animals and humane society like that would be a dream All right, so this is actually a really funny story. How I got started into content creation was when I was about 16 years old, I was bullied my whole like entire life. Um, and so when I was about 16 years old, I decided that I wanted to be a model, quote unquote model. Um, now I'm from a smaller place in Canada, so there isn't much for modeling here and the agencies are a little bit questionable the ones that I was talking to anyways. So they would charge you for your first shoot and you would just kind of go from there. Um, so I kind of, I signed, again, quote unquote, signed with this agency. It was nothing exclusive. It was nothing like that. But I signed with them and they did my first shoot and I took those pictures and then somebody else actually told me that I was able to go and shoot with other photographers without any sort of like cost to it or anything, just as a collaboration to build up a portfolio. So I started to do that quite frequently actually, and built up this portfolio, but had a ton of fun just creating different things. And it hit a point where I was starting to create and like put together these collaborations that were for different magazines and for just different like creative ideas. And I ended up with a ton of very cool photos. So I, at one point I, I didn't use Instagram until honestly, like I was almost maybe 18 when I started on Instagram. And at that point I was just kind of like posting a couple things here and there. And someone that I had been dating at the time had said to me, Hey, you know, all these girls make money off Instagram. You should just do the same thing. And I was like, you know what? I should do the same thing. So I started actually putting the effort into trying to get cross promoted on a ton of different platforms and trying to build up an audience and it worked. <laughs> Here I am now doing mostly all content creation and um, different like trips and stuff. I've gone to go on lots of different content trips and meet tons of crazy, like phenomenal people from it. So I've been very lucky in that, but it honestly just started with me at 16 years old needing a confidence boost. So going into this modeling so that I could see myself in a different light. And I would say that anyone who maybe has some self image issues or anything like that, having a photo shoot done is a fun, an amazing thing for you because you see yourself in a different way and you see yourself as something different than has been put into your mind for the whole, for me, it was the entirety of my life. So yeah, that's kind of what got me into it and drove me forward in it. All right, what drives me? 
Um, honestly, it's just trying new things and learning new things. I've been very lucky in the fact that I've met so many amazing people and I've gotten to do so many amazing things. I always joke that having followers is almost like being like in a private club where then you get to hang out with all these other creators that do similar things and have the same sort of lifestyle and mentality. So being in that and like just seeing all these people who are doing these amazing different things. Um, I have a couple goals that I would like to get to with it which I am working on relaunching a brand that I kind of started as like a soft launch and it's a brand that's based around like giving back to others. Um, I also want to get into some like teaching and stuff because obviously I went from being bullied and having no no self-image of like an awful self-image to then having this confidence and having a different lifestyle from everyone else. So I want to get into some like teaching and training on those kinds of things and just like being able to see the difference in people in general makes a huge difference in my life. Like it makes me really happy to see people succeed and to see just how life can be. Like for me, another big thing is I get to travel and I get to kind of live the life that I choose. So sometimes that means waking up at noon. Sometimes that means waking up at six in the morning. And if I want to go on a trip, I basically just go on it, even if it's on a whim, that kind of thing. Um, I love to figure out new things. So I'm always working on like, how can I make these things work? What are different ways that I could work around these and get them to like work for me in different ways? Like how can I use my platforms to then travel and not have to pay as much for it or just different things like that? Like it's just trying to figure things out, learning new things every day, being around people who are creative and in the same mentality. Like that's, that's the biggest thing for me. Okay, so that is a tough one. Um, I actually, a year ago, I bought myself a house and it's not a very big house. Like it's just something small. It was just like a little starter home, but I got divorced at the age of 21 and I had owned a house before with my ex-husband and just when I got divorced, he just wanted everything and I was like, just take it. So I was like, kind of like hands off, like I'm just gonna have to start from scratch. And so I did. And so I put all of my savings into like anything I was making that I wasn't needing for life expenses, I was putting into um, just saving and saving and saving until I was able to get myself a place. And so now I've got like a little place of my own. And it was honestly one of, one of the days, the day that I got it was one of the best days of my life because it was something that I did for myself. And now um, I'm, I also do a ton of YouTube, so I do get a lot of clothes. So it's nice to have multiple closets that I can use and you know, all that kind of stuff. It's It's been pretty, it's been pretty amazing all around for me. <laughs>